Hello, family. Uh, we're here at Cornerstone Church in Anaheim, and uh, today we're looking at Romans chapter one, uh, chapter ten, verses one through thirteen. I have a question. I want to ask you this: How do you view the lost people in your life? Do you allow your heart to be touched with compassion for them, or do you give up on trying to reach them because they seem difficult or hard-hearted to reach? Today we're going to look at uh, the heart of Paul as he has this wonderful, heartfelt love for his people. And, uh, and as he shares the, the truth, the gospel of salvation with them, we get to listen in and see God's word, how it is directed toward our own lives. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 1, Paul says this, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. He, uh, he had a passion. In fact, earlier on in chapter 9, he says he was willing to give up even being estranged from God just so his, his, uh, his Jewish family, his, his, his nation would come to Christ. It's something that was always on Paul's heart. And, uh, and, and his heart translated into concrete action, prayer. He prayed to God for Israel. Paul didn't just care, he prayed. And he prayed, obviously, because he believed prayer makes a difference. Why would Paul pray if he just thought that some of the people would, in fact, have no problem uh, you know, coming to Christ on their own? He knew that there was going to have to be God's intervention for them to discover and find Christ. He says in verse 2, For I testify about them that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to the righteousness of God. Their ignorance, the ignorance of God's righteousness, uh, is, was the thing that was holding them back. They saw God in a certain way, that there were rules and regulations. But even as God revealed himself in the law, the problem was, as they found themselves unable to obey the law fully and do it from the heart, they started making their own rules and regulations. They made about 7,000 of them. And they had all kinds of rules about everything, things that really even didn't pertain to what God's rules were. What they did is they started to establish their own law, their own rules. 
And they got away from what was revealed about God in the law. When God gave the law, he gave it for the purpose of drawing them unto him. The discovery of God's amazing grace and righteousness would cause people to go, I cannot follow this. That's why the scripture says that the law was a schoolmaster that drew people to, would draw people unto God. They would have to fall down uh, on their face before God in humility and say, I cannot fulfill this. But instead in pride, they went around trying to establish their own righteousness. And it kept them from God. It kept them because there was not the humility. It says in verse 4, Christ is the end of the law of righteousness for everyone who believes. See, both Christ is both the goal and the end of the law. And it says, for Moses writes about righteousness to which is based on the law. The man who does these things shall live by them. Now, he's already established throughout this book that, that we aren't able to keep this law, not unto righteousness, not unto the fulfillment of God's expectation for a right standing with him. But verse 6 says, But the righteousness which is based on faith says, Do not say in your heart you will ascend to heaven, for, it is, for that is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep, for that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. It's in your mouth, and it's in your heart. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you will be saved. See, in a nutshell, that's the gospel of salvation. You see, the word gospel simply means good news. And uh, if I said, like, for instance, I found out my wife had made me a banana cream pie, I would say that's gospel. That's good news. But that's good news that won't, won't save you. It's not good news that will save your life. But there is a good news, a particular good news, that saves your soul. And that good news is the gospel of salvation, which is simply this, that Jesus Christ died for your sins, according to the scripture. He was buried, and he rose again, according to the scripture. 1 Corinthians 15 actually tells us this is what we stand on. This is our foundation. Now, Paul here is doing that. You see, he doesn't mention the cross, but he mentions resurrection. So if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he rose from the dead, of course he had to die for that to happen. Now, when it comes to salvation, I love to see people come to Christ because I know their life eternally is changed. And when I lead people to Christ, I always want to bring in the full gospel of salvation. That Jesus Christ died for your sins. Well, you needed that because you cannot forgive your own sins. And everyone's a sinner. He's already established that here in this book. But it's also true that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So he died for our sins. He was buried and he conquered death. He rose from the grave. That's what we stand on. In fact, I like taking people that I've newly led to Christ or while I'm leading them to Christ to this very portion of scripture. I like to say to them, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Do you call him Lord? Will you say Jesus Christ is Lord? And they often say, yes, Jesus is Lord. I'll say, do you believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead, that Jesus rose from the dead. Do you believe in your heart? And they'll say, yes. And then I'll say, well, according to the scripture right here, what does it say you are? Usually they'll kind of think about it for a second. But as it re they read it, they'll say, it says I'm saved. It says you'll be saved. I said, that's what you're going to build the foundation of your Christian life on. It's not a feeling. It isn't that, you know, one day you just said, I, you know, I, I accept Christ. It's not because you felt saved. You're going to build your Christian life on the truth that is revealed right here in the Bible. 
you've confessed Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So my question to you is, what are you? According to the scripture. Verse 10 says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes in him will not be ashamed. See, if you believe in Christ, you'll not stand before the, the eternal hosts of heaven and be ashamed. Your sins will not be sent and paraded before all heaven. In fact, your sins will be under the blood of Jesus Christ, completely forgiven and forgotten. You'll never be ashamed. You'll stand before God in the purity of Christ because you have believed by faith in his righteousness and not your own. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that, Lord, our righteousness is in you. I thank you that we can stand on that the rest of our life, Lord, we can hold to the truth that, Lord, you have paid the price. Your gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Amen. Programming, 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다.